And... <sighs> oh, dear, dear. Excuse I'm me. the one that's only had about three years sleep, never mind you. I've got a teething child, so that's my excuse. Oh, aye. Uh-huh. <laughs> dry, dry your eyes. <laughs> You've been through it twice, you should know. Exactly, exactly. dry your eyes. <laughs> uh, and in the last piss, pe- last piss, <laughs> the last piece. Last <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kind of struggled for that, you know, or so. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> There's no button that's yawning, there'll be a farting next to Holy Trinity. Thank God I'm not in the same room as you. <laughs> Urgency. Uh, Urgency, yeah, uh, that's the word. A bit more, say that again, a bit more... Urgency? Well, I'll start that again. <laughs> oh. you, you feel like a <laughs> I was like, you, you got to admire the, the irony of that. I'm trying to say a bit more, and it paused and there was urgency. There was no urgency. Hey. Okay. A wee bit more urgency, eh? A wee bit more urgency. Right, I'll start that again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie, dear. Right, on you go. <sighs> oh, for fuck's sake. Well, at least there's only one game to cover, come on. Oh, dear, I thank God. Aye. And the stadium erupts in red, white and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go. Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the iReady podcast. As ever, I'm your host Eric and with me is my co-host Dave. How are you doing Dave? I'm fine mate, how's yourself? I'm just glad the international break's over. Yes, definitely. I think we've all been pining for some uh, some action back at Ibrox, haven't we? And uh, a pretty decent result, which I'm sure you're about to get into soon. So uh, no, uh, all f- things are good and looking forward to the big match tomorrow. Yes, can't wait. We'll obviously get into that as well. But yep. Um, so just uh, with the one game against uh, Livingston to cover, and then obviously we've got the AGM and a few other bits and pieces of news. So we'll just rattle on and we'll go down the tunnel and onto the pitch. I've not fucked that up for a while, you can't. Well done, mate. I, I know, I was about to say. <laughs> yes, so the first game is, or sorry, the only game really, is Saturday the 24th of November. It was a 3-0 win at home against Livingston. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, McCauley, Halliday, Jack, Arfield, Ejaria, Candias, Middleton and Lafferty. On the subs bench we had Fotheringham, Worrell, Flanagan, Rossiter, Koulibaly, Morelis and Grejda. So obviously a couple of changes there. Morelis has been one of the main ones on the bench and the big one was uh, Gareth McCauley getting a start uh, in the the back line. Yep. He certainly... he, as I say in the, in the last game that he came on Derek he certainly looked v- very assured I like to think a guy has experience in uh, international level that he's played at then uh, you know he would be able to slot in and he certainly looked quite good Derek yeah absolutely you know certainly very assured and I yep. think he had a few good games for uh, Northern Ireland as well uh, during the break so yes so to be honest we've not got a, a great deal to cover in this game because uh, it was a, a bit of a I don't know what to describe the performance to be honest very subdued I think we started off bright enough and then we kind of fell back into our usual kind of patter after we scored didn't we so uh, we fo- on the fourth minute Livy- Livingston keeper tries to kick the ball out from open play Lafferty closes it down and rebounds off Lafferty out for a goal kick it really could have went anywhere and it was good vision by Lafferty to close the keeper down so early on yep Ninth minute, Livy had a free kick, uh, wasn't cleared properly, uh, they had a shot on the edge of the box which was sclaffed, a fairly Livingston player who turns and shoots into the box and hits the outside of the left post and out, really dangerous move and I think quite early on Livingston were, were showing that they were going to be a threat, certainly they were getting forward but you know I think we had a, 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 you know, a lot of the possession as well though so. Yeah. 
they're, you can say what you, people can say what they want, Derek. I know that they're not a big name, but they've already shown Livingston they're a very capable team. They're a really strong and physical team that will cause problems. And we got yeah, you know, we got out of jail there with that one. It was a don't, don't get me wrong, Derek. It was a, a bit of a, a fluke that the ball landed straight to the guy, but the marking I think should have been a bit better, and we were very lucky that that didn't end up in the back of the net because McGregor was rooted to the spot when he hit it. So, yeah. I a wee bit lucky to get away with that one. Yep. A minute later, we were up the Livingston box and Middleton got the ball uh, in the box. A bit of a wrestling match with the defender where uh, he dragged Middleton down to the ground and the ball was put out. There was claims for a penalty, certainly by uh, Hugh Burns and uh, Tom <laughs> Tom Miller, uh, but uh, really not a lot of claims from the players. So um, half half call for a penalty, but not, nothing else there. Yes. 15th minute, Ajaria went on a charge and run with the ball uh, from midfield, hits a shot on the edge of the the box and it was over the bar. Good vision uh, by the Jaria there, and good powerful running, which is what we want to see. Players running with the ball, taking on players. So uh, certainly he's been a, a bright spark. Um, you know, certainly in the last five or six games when he's been playing. So yeah, he is. He, he, he does sort of go very quiet during games, Derek. But you know, when he does get on the ball and he's going forward, it does look dangerous. Yep. On the sixteenth minute. Middleton got the ball on the left side of the box great play into the middle of the box it just bounced in front of keeper and Lafferty it went out to our field on the right who tried to shoot it at an angle but it was cleared off the line by the defender so we had a really good chance there to go one up and a bit of fortune there with it being cleared off the line but a good move yeah. especially from Middleton down the left he was posing a, a threat as he's been over the last couple of games as yeah, well yeah he's been excellent yep yep. we got a corner uh, just before the 20th minute and uh, Candace converted it on the 20th minute a fantastic corner from Middleton from the right and Candace nips in with the head right in front of the keeper and puts it into the back of the net uh, great header but the ball from Middleton was outstanding wasn't it and it's something one of the features of his game has been able to put great balls into dangerous positions It was the reason it was so good Derek is because it wasn't the hopeful lump into the centre of the box. It was, uh, you know, the the precision that was put on the ball and for you know a guy that's no exactly massive, is he? And a guy that's not known for heading the ball, but the ball was just so good that Candice, you know, was able to nip in. It was at the perfect height for him and everything, just to get the wee flick on. It was a it was a fantastic goal, Derek. Really, really well played. Yep, thirty first minute. There's a twenty five yard free kick from Livingston on the right, forcing McGregor to make a good save. So once again, they were proving they were still dangerous. The last piece of play I've got here for the first half was on the forty second minute. Lafferty got the ball, dragged it to the left side of the box, hit a shot, but it hits the side net. And you know he was good getting in that position, but he really should have done better with the execution of the shot there. Um, certainly Lafferty, he, he, he played maybe the first up until we scored. I think he, he actually played fairly well. He was getting in, in amongst it all, and he was. Getting looking quite lively but towards the end of the first half I thought he tailed off a wee bit He's not had that you know he's not had a lot of game time Derek let's be perfectly honest uh, I don't know if he was playing midweek for Northern Ireland or not I, I didn't even check that to be honest with you I knew that Macaulay was playing can not remember if uh, Lafferty was I, I think he was so uh, if that was the case, you know, there's there's probably no excuse for him, you know, no being match sharp. But certainly for us, he's not had a lot of game time, Derek. So maybe just a wee bit rusty there. Again, he's, he's a guy that we know is is capable of a lot more, isn't he? So we'll we'll, we'll put it down, hopefully, just to a one off. But we'd like to think that we can depend on him to come in for certain games, eh? Yeah. So into the the, first, the second half, we you know, obviously you know fairly content. We're one 0 up, and it's maybe not so much the first goal, but we've we've sometimes struggled to get the the second goal in yeah. games, and and this has been no exception really. Uh, so as I said, comfortable, but room for improvement. Into the second half, fifty uh, third minute, it was a quick break up the park. Uh, we went down the left with Middleton, hits a shot and forces a save from the keeper who spills it, but right into the path of the defender. Uh, on the sixty first minute, Lafferty came off and Morelos came on. So certainly, uh, you know, Lafferty was, I think, not maybe not struggling, but as you said, maybe looking not as much sharp as he as he could have been. And certainly, Morelos comes on, but gave us a wee bit more um, urgency, didn't it, Dave? 
Yeah, it certainly did. I think you could tell straight away that he was desperate to go on the ball, Derek, because that's what we like to see. Yep. 76 minute, Halliday came off and Flanagan came on. Uh, 77th minute, McGregor having to pull off a decent save after a ball was crossed, knocked out to Livingston attacker who had a bouncing shot right uh, at the keeper. So, uh, fortunately, it was right at him, but he still had to be alert to, to save it anyway. And again, yeah. you know, getting to the later stages of the game, we're only still 1 0 up at that point. That's when the, the concerns and the groans start coming in, especially at Ibrox, doesn't it? So they kind of create a rod for their own back sometimes with, with that. It did, but I don't know about you, Derek. I wasn't. I still wasn't overly concerned at that point. I think there's been games that I've I've looked this season. And I've thought, shit, we're no offering anything here at all. We're no getting going. But I just I felt just with the introduction of Morelos that we were certainly going to be getting some more chances anyway and. Uh, you know, thankfully we did. Yep. Uh, just before, just after that, uh, in the seventy ninth minute, Ajaria came off and Koulibaly came on. Unfortunately, we closed the game up on the eighty third minute with Morelos getting a goal to make it two 0 uh, Tavernier on the right cuts it to Morelos on the right hand uh, on the right hand side of the of the box, cuts it inside, keeps going left, and then fires a shot to the right into the back of the net. Great goal all round, wasn't it? Um, great vision from Tavernier. I think Candias was involved as well to get it to Tavernier, uh, but Morelos was brilliant. As soon as he started cutting in, you just knew he was going to unleash a shot right. at some point. There was only one thing on his mind there, Derek, and that was getting a shot in, and it was just great. It was a great sort of side step they had to put it on his left foot and absolutely drilled it. Goalkeeper had no chance. It was it was a really, really good goal because it put it right across the opposite side for where the goalkeeper was. So, uh, you know, great great finishing by Morelos and a guy who's just, you know, buying confidence now, isn't he? He's, he's just he's playing fantastic. Yeah. And we rounded out the game on the 88th minute with Arfield making it 3-0. Uh, he got the ball in the middle on the edge of the box, sends it to the right of the box to Morelos who puts in a great cross for Arfield to nip in and put it into the back end. Lovely kind of not one two, but it was a great move between great vision between the two of them uh, to to see each other and uh, great execution for the finish as well. It was a great wee flick finish actually, Derek, because he didn't have a lot of space to get the ball in. Uh, but you know, first time shot that I think that's what's great about our, our field. Sometimes he looks. I'm not say lost, but sometimes you know he can be very quiet in games. But he's always going to be a goal threat, isn't he? He's always looking to get in the box and get on there. And uh, we've 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 been missing that a lot, uh, you know, especially coming from midfield. You know, I think ever since uh, like I think the last player that did things like that was actually Carlos Pena, wasn't it? A guy that was actually. You know, from midfield that was getting in, into the box to get on the end of crosses and things like that. So, no, again, absolutely great to see and, uh, you know, a great finish again, like I said. Yep. And I said that on the reaction pod, it wasn't a 3 0 game, wasn't it? Because I think that the, I think that's highlighted the fact that I've not got a lot to speak about. There was not a lot that happened in the game, to be honest, apart from the, the points I raised. You know, there was a couple of half chances which I've, I've not covered, but, you know, there were, that's, why, that's why I've not covered them. There were half chances. And Again, it was a bit of a midfield battle. Not our greatest performance. I think our midfields were, were missing out in a lot of the game. They weren't putting the cutting edge passing through like they, they have been previously. Um, but I'm not going to complain at a 3-0 win at home. Or, or no. Especially, I mean, this start is, is, is incredible. In Livingston's previous 12 games to that, they had only conceded seven goals. Yeah, like I said, Derek, they, Livingston are a very capable team. They're really, really strong. They're all big, massive guys. Holt has got them set out, basically, to try and know and concede. Uh, because I think a lot of their victories have been by, you know, one goal, Derek. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's all been very tight, but they are a very, very organised team and a really difficult team to break down. And I know, like you said, it wasn't a, a great performance, but again, we stuck to our guns. We kept going for it and kept going for it, and we still managed to get the three goals, Derek, which is which is excellent. So. To still, you know, in, in not to play well and not to really dominate a game, but still win 3-0 is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, 
I mean, we certainly benefited from uh, every other team bar Celtic dropping points at the, that weekend as well. So yep. we're now sitting second in the league, oh, uh, yes. only two points behind Celtic. So this is apparently our worst start for you know whatever it was thirty odd years. Yeah, bring it on if that's the case. We're sitting one ahead of Hearts. Uh, we have got a go- game in hand against them. Two ahead of Kelly with also a game in hand over them. Three ahead of St Johnson, also a game in hand against them. Six ahead of Aberdeen and eight ahead of Hibs. Incredible, yep. isn't it? Yep. Uh, and as I say, I think the next game on Sunday, this is going to be a very important one for, for us, Derek, in the league. I know we've got this big game coming up tomorrow that, that you'll get into, but a, a victory against Hearts away from home, you know, puts us a top of the league because Celtic can't play in a league game. It's uh, them and Aberdeen in the cup final. So this could, this could be a huge, huge game for, for us on Sunday as well. So. I just hope that you know we get through the next the next two two games with two victories would be absolutely sensational. Yep, absolutely. Just going back to the league there, obviously, but you know the goal difference may play a part into this, and we're we're sitting with the same goal difference as Celtic just now. So yep. we've played thirteen, uh, won eight, lost three, drawn two, scored thirty five. Conceded 11, goal difference plus 24 and on 27 points just now. Um, I mean, Celtic, considering they've, they've you know, a, a big thing's been made about their defence, you know, being a wee bit shaky. They've actually only conceded six goals in the league. So yeah. it's uh, quite quite uh, interesting stats that. Um, so we'll see what happens. But as you said, yeah, absolutely. It's a massive game for us on Sunday. A, a massive psychological boost that would yes. be as well to, to, to go ahead of Celtic. So uh, we'll need to wait and see what happens there. Just going back to the Livingston game and uh, Morelos for a minute there. Morelos did get booked in the game and uh, some people are saying it might have been a bit of a ploy to to uh, basically go over, the, intentionally go over the threshold for yellow card points limit uh, to, so that he's um, going to be available for Hearts and Celtic, isn't it? So I've heard a few people saying that, Derek, but... I know that would be like saying that you were going to intentionally get booked, which I think is pretty ridiculous, eh? So I think uh, maybe Stephen Gerrard had an eye on him not playing in those games to just, you know, I don't don't know if he's he's had a wee niggle uh, and that's why he didn't start the match, but I I wouldn't read too much into the whole booting thing, Derek. No. So, as we've said, the next game is coming up is the big important one tomorrow night, uh, which is Thursday the 29th of November. It's at home against Villarreal. So, uh, certainly all to play for there still. Uh, the, the game, the, so the league is wide open, isn't it? Um, as I've said previously in reaction pods especially, we've kind of met our expectations and exceeded them this year in Europe so you know what if we go out and get beat then disappointing obviously but I'm not going to be downhearted about it because it's, it's every game's a bonus now even to be in contention with uh, with uh, trying to get out of this group is just something that beyond what anybody could have imagined this season so I'm happy whatever way it goes tomorrow I just hope Derek that they go out and they really test themselves tomorrow uh, because any kind of result against a quality team from La Liga is, you know, absolutely fantastic home or away. And we went uh, out away from home, played a fantastic game of football, and you know, uh, you know, we, we drew two two over there, which was an incredible result as well. When everybody thought we we're going to get hammered, as you say, it's it's good that there's not a lot of expectation. But at the same time, we are at home, Derek. All the fans have paid a lot of money to go to this game, so. I really, really hope we go for it, and I'm, you know, I would be over the moon if we got a result tomorrow night. It would be fantastic. It really would be, be brilliant for the support. It would be brilliant financially. It would be great if you know, if if we got a victory and it got us playing European f- football after uh, January, like I said, but you know, it would be great for everyone as a whole. So, here's hope we do it. Yep. Uh, then you've said obviously the game on Sunday, which is Sunday the second of December, away to Hearts. That's our. 12 uh, midday kickoff, mm-hmm. um, so an interesting uh, game that. And then the next game after that is Wednesday the 5th of December at home to Aberdeen. That's a 1945 kickoff, so certainly they're going through a bad patch to now as we expected them to. It'll be a, a, another interesting game. We've got a, a decent run of, of games coming up again. So when when was that uh, game against Aberdeen? Sorry, Derek. Can uh, you say that again. Wednesday the 5th of December. Wednesday the 5th of December so straight in at Hearts so 
Villarreal at home, Hearts away, Aberdeen away. No bother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it could be three out of three. You never know. Oh, oh that, that, that'd be incredible. It really would be, but uh, I think we take one game at a time, eh? That's all you can do. So Yes. So that kind of rounds out that section. So now we'll move into the classic match. And there it is. The final whistle's gone. Rangers have won the European Cup Winners' Cup. Dave, you have got a game against the orange half of Dundee, haven't you? Yes, or as I, <laughs> as they were comically described uh, in Twitter today by someone as Dundee Tesco. <laughs> 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 Which I thought was quite good, yes. I have got a game, Derek, from 1999 uh, when Rangers were at home against Dundee United. Uh, the Rangers team on that day was Lionel Charbonnier in goals, Sergio Perini, Craig Moore, Lorenzo Amoruso and that man, Tony Vidmar, at left back. Midfield, Claudio Reyna, Barry Ferguson, Giovanni Van Bronckhurst and Neil McCann and up front for Rangers Michael Malls and Rod Wallace on the bench Antti Niemi Darius Adamchuk Jonathan Johansson Barry Nicholson and the Hammer George Alberts the Rangers team obviously going back that time it was uh, Dick Advocat who was the manager uh, Hugh Dallas brother Hugh was the referee for this game uh, some of the players that were playing for Dun- Dundee United Alan Coombe in goals, David Hanna, Jason DeVos, remember a big massive uh, towering defender. Uh, Always wanted Mag- to sign him. <laughs> Magnus Skoldmarker, as he was more affectionately <laughs> known. Magnus Skidmark, I think I've used that one before, <laughs> I think haven't you? Have, yeah. uh, Billy Dodd, Stephen Thompson, uh, to name but a few. So uh, it was a glorious day at Ibrox. It was absolutely roasting. Uh, everybody had their short sleeve shirts on. Great weather to play football. Uh, and it was a, a, a bit of a sort of controlled start for Rangers. We were keeping the ball, keeping the ball. And then on about the third minute, about 12 passes by the, the Rangers team. Uh, it was picked up by Rod Wallace, who played a through ball to Michael Malls, who's just stayed on side. He has an incredible shot, and it just just goes past the post of the left hand side. Very unlucky not to score there. And then just two minutes later, Claudio Reyna runs to the edge of the box and shoots, uh, but hits the defender. Uh, and unfortunately, so unfortunately for Dundee United, straight in a Coombs arms because it took the the sting off the shot there. Then not long after that, Neil McCann with a long curling shot at the edge of the box, which was again saved low, uh, you know, by Alan Coombs. So it really was just all pressured by Rangers. Rangers then win a free kick on the edge of the box after a clumsy tackle uh, by Davy Dodds. And from that resulting free kick, Rangers take the lead. Packed penalty box. It's Rainer. season for Cody Arena, a superb free kick, excellent technique, and Dick Advocat's team will one up. Amadusa was alongside, but Reina didn't need him, curled over the top of the wall, it dipped, it swerved away from Alan Coombe, and into the corner of the Dundee United net. It was Claudio Reyna who takes an incredible shot, curls it right over the wall and high into the left of Alan Coombe's goal to make it 1-0 to Rangers. We really did have an array of talent at that point to take three kicks and Claudio Reyna stepped up. Absolutely sensational goal. 1-0 Rangers on the 22nd minute. And then not long after that, Neil McCann with a long-range shot which deflects out for a corner. Again, shows you how good a player that, that Claudio Arena was because Dundee United actually picked up the ball and played a through ball to Stephen Thompson. He was actually race clear. He had about three or four feet uh, of a distance on Claudio Arena, but Claudio Arena sprinted, made it up, uh, and an absolutely fantastic tackle. One, you know, last gasp tackle he put it out for the corner absolutely great stuff then Billy Dodds actually had a good chance for Dundee United he tried to chip Lionel Charbonnier in the edge of the box but it was cleared by the Rangers defender uh, I think it was uh, Lorenzo Amoruso 
uh, Michael Walls then beats his man in the centre uh, of the Dundee United half plays Neil McCann through but he shoots just over from a tight angle and that was the first half drawn to a close after that Rangers well on top Dundee United had a couple of chances but Rangers with the vast majority of clear cut chances to score but only 1-0 at half time Rangers had to make a sub though at half time and Darius Adamchuk come on for Sergio Perini but again Rangers started the way they finished it was all Rangers at the start of the second half Dundee United just could not get anywhere near the ball and it wasn't too long before Rangers added uh, to the goals and it was on the 50th minute Balls to Van Bronckhorst gets it back lovely pass Giovanni Van Bronckhorst Saved by Kim, but he can't keep it out. It's two for Rangers. And that's his first of the season. He's struck ten times last season. And this was the exchange between the two guts. But lovely pass from Moles. Opened up the United defence. And Alan Coombe won't want to see that again. He got good hands to it, but he couldn't push it away. And the ball spun off his left hand. Into the back of the net. A throw in to Michael Moles, who then found Giovanni Van Bronckhurst, who played it back to Michael Moles again, and then Moles held on to the ball. Van Bronckhurst himself made the overlap run, and Moles played it back. So it was like a 1 2 1 2 between the two of them, and Van Bronckhurst hits a low shot, which sort of bounces underneath the goalkeeper, and it looks as if it's about to stop, but the spin on the ball. The momentum of the ball and the ball just rolled over the line to make it 2-0 to Rangers. Uh, and then a great break by Rangers just after some pressure by Dundee United. And the ball played through to Neil McCann in his own half. And then it was like a fantastic run uh, to make it sort of a three-on-three situation. He passes the ball to Van Bronckhurst, who you know has a shot just wide. He had some other options there, but unfortunately that didn't come to it. Uh, Dundee United then started coming into it after that, and it was like end to end stuff for about the next sort of 5, 15 minutes. They had a, a couple of chances in our uh, box, but it was well cleared by the Rangers' defence. Giovanni Van Bronckhurst was just a constant threat at this point. He really was playing fantastic. And then he gets a, an absolutely fantastic ball. It gets won by Rod Wallace. Uh, but Rod Wallace gets tackled. The ball gets put out for a corner. It was a fantastic ball through to him. But then just after that, from, the, from that resulting corner, Rangers scored their third goal. Van Bronckhorst takes the corner quickly. It's Neil McCann and Rod Wallace! All sorts of accusing glances in the Dundee United goal mouth. Rangers third, it was the cross from Neil McCann, and a header well won by Rod Wallace. The header was down and away from Coombe, and Rangers three goals up. And it was a short corner to Neil McCann and he puts a fantastic cross into the centre of the box to the smallest man on the park, Rod Wallace, who just had to jump up, not even that high, and head the ball past Coombe and goals. I don't know how on earth Michael, uh, sorry, Rod Wallace got on the end of that one right in the centre of the box, but great goal by Wallace and that was game over uh, at that point. Great goal. Uh, and then not long after that, Michael Moles really should have scored another fantastic cross by Neil McCann. And it just sits perfectly about knee height in the air on the penalty spot. All Moles had to do was keep it down, but unfortunately he volleyed it over the bar. Don't know how he missed it, especially a, a player uh, as good as him. Really surprised at that one, really should have scored. Uh, but then not long after that, Michael Moles takes a, an elbow right in the face uh, when he beats the Dundee United player Partridge Aha! on the byline. Absolutely no action taken at the, uh, at the time. Shocking, absolutely shocking. Uh, you know, it was clear as day that he got 
taking out there, but nothing happened. But uh, uh, not long after that, another sub in George Alberts comes on for Giovanni Van Bronckhurst, who had a, who'd been having a fantastic game, but Rangers had that massive game against Parma coming up for a qualification for the Champions League. So Van Bronckhurst came off, and what a sub to bring on George Alberts. Uh, and then not long after that, an absolutely sublime piece of skill by Michael Malls. High ball, turns his man with one flick, but it's cleared by the goalkeeper. It would have been a sensational goal if that had happened. Then Tony Vidmar runs at the defence, turns his man, it's a great turn by Tony Vidmar, shoots low and a fantastic save by Coombe. And then on the 75th minute, we scored another goal and it came from another corner. But it was a shocking the defensive play by uh, Jim McIntyre. The United defender just completely mishits the clearance and the ball flicks up at the back post and who's there? The man that I just mentioned, Tony Vidmar, rows like a salmon at the back post, gets his head on it and <laughs> headers it into the back of the net. Rose like a salmon, come on. That's him, that's him. <laughs> uh, and then not long after that, uh, Billy Dodds uh, hits a free kick against the bar for Dundee United. Quite un- unlucky with that one. But then Dundee United did manage to pull a goal back from uh, a header at a corner to make it 4 1. Smith with the corner kick. Up went DeVos. Jason DeVos pulls a goal back for Dundee United. It won't be too much consolation. He's always a threat at set pieces. And the Smith corner kick was buried in the corner of the net, away from Chabonnier. And that is how the game finished off. Some fantastic play on show. Giovanni Van Bronckhurst was just absolutely sensational that day. And uh, if you get the chance to go back and watch it, please do. You get to see some cracking players. And that was, you know, a fantastic season for us. Because like I mentioned, the uh, the following game after that was the return leg against Parma, which we were beaten 1-0, but we still managed to progress through to the Champions League group stages. So a fantastic time to look back on, some fantastic players. And if you get the chance to go back and watch it, please do. Yes, a great game, and you know, again, it was the display of talent that was on on involved there with the, the Kavika yep. years. Just incredible to look back at games like this, and you kind of think that they're run of the mill games, you know, back then. You know, but you know, you look back and the the, the talent we had there, it was incredible. So, uh, really good to see. So, we'll be back with another classic match the next time. Yes. So we'll move now into the news. Right, we were going to start with the EGM, but as uh, Dave was going through uh, his uh, classic match there, I was looking on Twitter and there's been a bit of breaking news, so I'll lead with this one. I had news to cover about this anyway, but two weeks, obviously, we're talking about the St Mirren game with the Daniel Candias ridiculous sending off um, after his second yellow. Two weeks after the incident and the uh, Rangers looking for clarification about the whole thing, the SFA published a response over, question, over questions relating to the, the second yellow yellow card and it's because apparently he made an unsporting gesture to the St Mirren player so basically he's getting a yellow card for blowing a kiss uh, Rangers submitted a formal complaint they submitted a statement as well basically calling into question the, some of the decisions not just with ourselves that Willie Collum has had this season so far they've said that the, the whole decision is ridiculous that it's clear as day that a mistake has been made and there needs to be a change in the rules about viewing uh, and, and changing uh, decisions on yellow cards if they're clearly wrong in this case the breaking news tonight is that the SFA are to hit Rangers with five charges over our attack. No further details as of yet, but are they honestly for real with this one? They uh, Bear in mind, I can, uh, there's been a new compliance officer 
picked by the Celtic compliance officer uh, that's been put in place here. So are they honestly trying to tell us, because we've questioned the validity of, one, the referee's actions, and yep. two, the, the actual process of appeals for something that is clearly wrong, that are they trying to say that we were incorrect and we should be brought up in charges of this? This is going to blow a can of worms, isn't it? It really is, and you know, and surely, surely, the uh, you know that we're going to be hitting them back with some with some sort of response very quickly, Derek, because that's as as you say. For I actually mentioned it in the last podcast, Derek. I said to you that all Daniel Candace did was blow someone a kiss. I actually said that to you, and I says to you, so there's no way that that can be you know, the cause of the yellow card. I actually said that, and now they then said that that was the case, which is completely, I mean, diabolical and ridiculous more than anything else. Uh, and now the fact that they're c- coming out, basically saying, how dare we question a referee? How dare we question anything that goes against their club? And they're wanting to punish us for it. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, Derek. It really is. I'll give you one name. Scott Brown. Remember what he'd done against uh, Juf? Mm-hmm. Stood right in front of his face after scoring a goal. One, it was inflammatory. Two, it wasn't sporting. And there was nothing done about that back then. So th- that's just off the top of my head. Players wind each other up all the time, especially after goals are scored. Are, are they honestly so fucking thick that they think this? But we're not going to come back all guns blazing with this one? There is heaps of video evidence to show that Colum has been incompetent at very best. And this decision is just unbelievable. That I mean, as you said, he blew a kiss. So what then does that mean Anton Ferdinand done? That was violent conduct then by trying to uppercut him and put him in a headlock. Is that not more, more worthy of a red card rather than a yellow then? I'm actually looking, I mean, d- does it actually say what the five charges are, Derek? There's, there's very scant details on it now, because uh, obviously it's just breaking news. that They've not updated it on the website yet. But apparently <sighs> we've got a, up until next Tuesday, the 4th of December, to respond with a principal hearing set for Wednesday, the, December the 19th. So uh, certainly I'm pretty sure there'll be more statements uh, from Rangers coming very shortly with that one, because uh, you honestly could not make this up now. You really couldn't. It is just so idiotic. And once it's, again, it shows our so childish, our incompetent uh, governing body in this country. When football in this country is starting to get back on a, on a track, they're, they're, they're praising the, the whole shitty TV deal, which is, yeah, it might be better than what they've got. The, the, they've got Brendan Rodgers versus... Um, Brendan Rodgers versus Stephen Gerrard. Stephen Gerrard alone has, has brung the, the profile of Scottish football right up and they want to get entrenched in this stupidity. Uh, just, you know, as I said, you couldn't make it up. It's it's incredible, Derek. I mean, we've heard for so many ex-referees now even saying that some of the decisions are, you know, puzzling. Uh, they don't know wh- why they've been made. But they have now... The, the the governing body has now dug a hole for itself here, Derek, in, uh, you know, as they all see it, sticking up for the referees. Uh, and I cannot wait for the response now for Rangers because this is, we, we need to go all, all guns blazing here, Derek, because that's absolutely shocking. And as I keep saying, the word ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. It's, as Rangers said in their statement, as Willie Collum was allowed to go on his, his, um, his duties the following week without mm-hmm. any w- without any sanctions or anything like that. And the only sanction would be to demote him to, to a, a, a division below. But that's not really any sanction, is it? That's actually unfair on the, the teams that he's getting demoted to. Exactly. Candias is now no along, no, it wasn't allowed to, to play a game. He was suspended. So there's um, yep. you know potential lost revenue from him, from sponsors, from uh, obviously his appearance fee that if he's got one as well, any goal f- uh, fee that he might get, so he's not allowed to do his job because of somebody made a mistake I, I just it's, it, see, do you know, if it was a contentious decision I would say, right, fair enough, we've went all guns blazing about mm-hmm. something that, that's maybe been a wee bit, you know, but dodgy but it's, it's clear as day it's yeah, not. It's, it's clear it's as not. day, and as you said they've dug a hole for themselves, so uh, riles me up so it does <laughs> I think it riles everybody up, Derek, and I really hope it riles up 
the officials at Rangers because uh, we, we really need to be hit, hitting them back with something as soon as possible because this can't go on. It's 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 just I, I, I honestly keep saying the saying the word ridiculous, but it is. It's just I, I can't think of any, anything else. But in any other country in the world, that would be looked at sensibly. Uh, and they would come to a sensible answer. And this country is no, it's Rangers. Fuck them. Let's uh, let's hammer them. Let's punish them as much as we po- possibly can. How dare they come out and question anything to do with re- referees? That's basically what it is, Derek. Yeah, I mean, if there was ever a time for the, the other clubs in Scotland to come together on an issue, it's certainly this because, you know, as I've said before. I don't give in to this, you know, whole bias referee thing. However, there's certain decisions that, that do make you question it sometimes. But, you know, it's just pure incompetence from referees. The standard of referee is just ridiculously bad in this country. And, you know, it's a difficult job. We know that. But they need help. And, you know, digging their heels in over a clear decision that was wrong. As I've said previously, if he didn't see the instant, he can't give a yellow card. And if he did see it, which is what their statement is claiming, and he saw something. When what, what the hell is it? it that's not in the rule book, surely. Blowing a kiss is unsporting behaviour. It's again, again. I, I said it before, Derek. He has booked him, and I don't care what anybody said. He has went back and reviewed that, realised he's fucked it up, and yep. thought, oh no, saw that. I'll be sticking to my guns here. That's what I, that's what he's getting booked for. Absolutely ridiculous, Derek. That's all it is. And the SFA won't back down. They're going to back their man, and they're going to make a complete. And they've made themselves look so so bad, so amateurish. And again, it's just a it beggar's belief. It really does. Yep. So, well, uh, can I move on now? But um... aye. The AGM, certainly over the past uh, few years, it's been getting better, and this has probably been uh, probably the most uh, positive one that has been so far. I think uh, it was a lower turnout for shareholders this year than mm-hmm. previous years, and I think that's a testament to the good work that's getting done. Uh, certainly started off with a lengthy statement from Dave King, uh, touching on financial losses, but stating the business model for uh, non-fan investors uh, it was to make a loss for a number of years before being profitable, Profitable, and that was what they, they bought into. Um, the reasons for the losses are, are, are a lot down to, again, the changes in management. Uh, basically, he did touch on disappointing results in terms of the, the early European exit last year to progress and uh, disappointing league um, the results. He did kind of... Uh, the, the media... I'm not going to say unbelievably because that's clearly what they were all about. They've interpreted his words slightly differently by claiming that he, he was absolutely burying Pedro Kishina, which, um, you know, as I said, he did state on the disappointing results, but he, he did certainly not, he, he certainly never buried them in what he said, did he? No, I think he kind of gave him a sort of under, you know, a, a bit of a compliment, Derek. He said that he was, uh, you know, worked tireless, t- tirelessly, I should say, for the good of the club, and uh, you know, and he, you know, he, he certainly recognised the effort that he put in. But again, I think in his words, it basically they, they knew it just wasn't going to work out, and that's why they had to make a change. Yeah. Um, he went on to also uh, praise Mark Allen and the team for what they've done um, yep. and one thing that we're now apparently looking into when we're looking to sign players is not only the football and attributes but the more or less the mental capacity for the player to handle the pressure for playing playing w- with us uh, before before signing the player and he kind of highlighted the fact that you know especially last year our away form was better because it was maybe largely down to the fact that there was less pressure uh, from the away fans than there is being being at home, so they're looking at the mental capacity of players to, to actually handle handle that now, which is, is a good thing. He highlighted the fact that it was uh, 32 youth international players in our ranks now between age 16 and 21, I think it was, which is incredible, and yep. 23 academy players have been training with the first team. Yeah. Uh, also the fact that the academy got an 88% ranking which is the top in Scotland and better than some of the m- much more uh, kind of well, how established. Do you say established clubs yep. in, in Europe so that's incredible and you know considering how bad th- things were in, in that area of, of Rangers over the maybe past five years the, the leaps and bounds we've come on yeah. is just something astonishing isn't it? 
just even in the last uh, two two years, Derek, it's been you know absolutely incredible, and we're starting to see you know players coming through, and you know we're hearing also you know it's especially the, the 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 progress that they made in the European league that they went into. I mean they've had some fantastic performances and results against some of the best clubs in the world, and that uh, which is excellent for you, you know the young boys and. Again, it's great. It's great pulling power for us, you know, when we're trying to attract these young players also that we're playing at such a high level and the facilities are so good and playing against, you know, top quality opposition. It's it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And as you say, if you know, for, from where we've came from, it's it's nothing short of a miracle, is it? Yeah. He also went on to obviously touch on the the refurb of Auchinhowe and uh, Ibrox, and that's ongoing issues. Uh, there again, that will account for one-off fees that have, or one-off um, expenses and financials as well. So um, you've got to take that into account. When we have had the last ten odd years of you know no maintenance at all on both facilities, um, you know you've got to spend money now to to get it back up to standard. And as he pointed out. The stadium's debt free. The training set the facility is debt free. Which you look at, you know, say Arsenal for instance. I think they had a massive debt on their stadium when they built the Emirates, and that's something that we can't see. Our our yeah. stadium is fully owned by us, and that's yep. a pure asset. So we've got nothing going out that way. Also had a dig at Sports Direct and claims their next round of litigation all, all um, against us will prove unfru- uh, unfruitful. Obviously paraphrasing there, but um, you know certainly he doesn't believe that they've got a case to stand on now so uh, good to see that that way uh, the board then went on to answer questions the f- one of them being about the BB dis- BBC dispute uh, they basically said it's still ongoing we are in quarterly meetings with them apparently as per standard uh, we are willing to sit down but it's a case of BBC wanting to come to the come to the table uh, really it's, it's up to you we're standing on the ground it looks like and I'm quite glad we are doing that because there's you know despite what they've kind of said the, the Stuart Robertson said there's no we don't believe there's an agenda against us but clearly there is you know with the report and time and time again and it's still going on to this day so um you know we want all we want is a fair balanced debate they don't give us it do they definitely not Derek and we've spoken about it at length before I mean even uh, even some of the BBC's uh, financial reporters you know, I've, I've got to put their wee digs in here and there, you know, and there's absolutely no, no need for it. It's, it's quite incredible. I mean, we've all been saying it for, for ages, Derek, all the Rangers fans. We're just looking, as you say, for just something unbiased, but it just does this does seem to happen. It's incredible. And even uh, ex-players that have played for us that are working for the BBC, can you know, there's, there, there's some sort of agenda there as well. It's, it's quite incredible. And when you see the, the, the coverage that we get on the likes of Sky, it's, it's, it's like totally different, isn't it? It's like night and day. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm still quite pleased as well. I think it was actually uh, Bill Young put a wee tweet out uh, last week, which I retweeted, and he was ba- b- basically saying, you know, the BBC, we we all pay for the BBC, so uh, you know their coverage should be, you know, like it is for, for everyone else. So they're needing to actually, not his words, but they basically made out that they're needing to actually just grow up and get somebody to go in and, and get this settled, so that they can be, you know, full. Uh, you know, match c- coverage and, you know, better reviews and, you know, interviews and stuff like that coming out from the BBC, but uh, I can't see it happening, Derek. No, no, with the current regime anyway, so I'll, I'll not hold my breath. No. Uh, they also stated that uh, talks are positive and ongoing with the council regarding stadium developments like the fan zone. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh of, uh, as well, they're talking still about safe standing. That's uh, still being looked into because apparently they only just got the proposal, but that was months and months ago. So, yeah, um, I think that's still. And again, as I've said previously, I think that ultimately any decision on that will wait until this, the three-year trial period at uh, yep. the gyrodome's finished, which hasn't been certainly all successful given who uh, stands in that area as well. And I think there's a lot of issues uh, there with them moving about and stuff like that. So, we we'll need to wait and see what that happens there Dave King also said the stance on Celtic's ticket allocation won't change uh, which is good to see once you've you kind of made this decision you can't really go back can you so 
Well, that's it, De- Derek. I mean, uh, it's, it's basically this. Oh, I've been listening to uh, you know a, a, a lot. Of, I've been, been reading a lot of stuff as well, and people are making you know an absolutely huge issue out of it, and it's basically again. Uh, oh, that's Rangers. You know, they're they're taking the half, or they're you know they're trying to do this, or they're trying to do that. But but Derek, the it was the the precedent was set a few seasons ago when Hibs done it with us when we were in the Championship. Remember? Yeah. It was all done then. There was hardly anything said about it. It was allowed to happen. Rangers have basically said we want our fans to come in and see the game. Uh, you know, this was an, an agreement that, that was put in, you know, a long time ago. But we're wanting our fans to come in and cheer the team on, and you know that that's the end. Of it. At the end of the day, Celtic were, were the ones that had to come out straight away and uh, you know do the same, and they made a complete arse at Derek. You can see, you know, any, any, anybody can say what they want, but they certainly did made a severe arse, and then again tried to turn it back round and blame it all, all on us. As we knew they would do anyway, but uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm delighted as well. The more Rangers fans in there, the better, Derek. Yep, absolutely. Um, also, maybe a slightly daft question uh, was about Lee Wallace uh, and somebody uh, piped Aye, up. I heard that. And yeah. Said that the way that Rangers have treated him is disgusting. Again, this is the thing that people are not kind of grasping is that they are not privy as to what actually went on. Yes, the tribunal that he won about not having to pay the fine. His fine that Rangers gave him does not actually admonish him of any blame in any of the issues that, that, that surrounded it there. All it says is Rangers were unjust to give him the fine. Um, Gerard took over that question, um, stating that he was obviously injured for about 12 months. He came back, he got further injuries, he's in training, he's a, a consummate professional, uh, but this is a strange thing. He says that he's uh, got better cover in that, possession, uh, in that position just now. I'm really not sure sure how accurate that comment was <laughs> given the fact that you know the, the Halliday has been covering that position I know that they're probably both Flanagan and Halliday are cover for Barisic but Barisic yeah. has been largely out injured since he came here I know. and you've got Flanagan who is not firing all cylinders and he's not even that position and Halliday isn't that position either so. I know. and this this is the thing that's worrying me about tomorrow night Derek is we don't have a recognised left back because although we know that Andy Halliday will give 100% he's no a left back is he and we all know that John Flanagan is actually a defensive right sided you know a, a, a right back a, and, and more of a right back rather than a full back so him playing out on the left hand side is going to leave us exposed like it has done quite a few times I don't think that Halliday is good enough to play in there he's maybe alright in, in the, the weird games but in these big games we really need a left back so I thought Stephen Gerrard over the last few weeks might have been tempted Derek to put him in there but again Stephen Gerrard has got to stick by his players hasn't he and he's made a big thing of bringing Andy Halliday back into the team and keep, keep him there and I'm not going out and loan uh, and he brought John Flanagan in himself he's one of his players so he's going to stick up for his own players isn't he but I thought that he might have been tempted to put him in there but I doubt that's just not going to happen now the one thing I will say is that I was looking at the pictures from training today and Borna Barisic was training uh, with the team but I don't know if he's going to be fit enough to play tomorrow I hope he is but I've got a feeling he won't be yeah one thing that I, I meant to mention about Dave King and his, his long statement is I think it was at the end where he started talking about Graham Murray and he called him his uh, player, his uh, person of the year or something to that effect. A bit strange, I thought. I, I know he's back at the club. He came in twice and done a job which wasn't asked of him. He didn't want to do it. He was out of his depth, absolutely. You know, a lot of fans get on his back and don't like him for what he done and how he handled himself. You know, I think he was put in a position that he, he didn't really want and, you know, he stepped up and, yeah, he was out of his depth. I think he gets unfairly criticised, but, you know, he, I can maybe understand where he was coming from to try and, you know, he, he, Marty did deflect a lot away from the board during that period and mm-hmm. I think that's maybe what, what he was trying to get at and Possibly. make a, a public kind of gesture that way, but it was a bit of stra- strange wording, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. 
No, you you could be right there, Derek. It was uh, a, a bit a strange one and completely out the blue as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, just last thing on Dave King here is uh, his bid to have the contempt of court uh, action dropped was rejected by a judge. That's obviously in relation to the takeover panel ruling that because he never made the offer for the, the shares. Uh, so he's been ordered to pay the court costs of fighting them. Basically, it means his contempt of court charge will still stand. So I don't actually know what that... that what that will entail right. anyway but um, certainly the issue of acting in concert appears to be still ongoing because I think it's still a grey area Bec- obviously now because of the dilution of shares the, and the latest share issue there so it, I'm not too sure how the, the whole thing stands now, again it really doesn't make any difference to Rangers as such it's it's just a, a Dave King thing that yeah. he's attached to Rangers so uh, another good bit of commercial business here. We are now I've got an official gin partner. Uh, not that gin's a massive drink I'll, I'll have anyway, but uh, we've signed up uh, an agreement with Liverpool Gin. So they obviously had the Liverpool connection there with yeah. Gerard and, and McAllister there presenting it. So. Excellent. And speaking of Gerard, his uh, film Make, uh, Make Us Dream is now available on Amazon Prime. I watched it myself. Maybe not the best uh, a documentary films about football, but certainly worth a watch nonetheless uh, because he's our manager, isn't it? Okay, I, will, uh, I might give that a wee view, Derek. Yes. Uh, Rangers did play the Chris Boyd testimonial uh, for Killy. Um, just it was a last weekend, I think it was, or two weekends ago. It was a Killy Heroes beat Rangers uh, Euro eleven six three. Boyd scored the hat trick. I think two were penalties. Um, Nacho Novo got a goal off the top of my head, and uh, he donated all his, all the money uh, proceeds from it to a charity. So great gesture Excellent. for Boyd there. Good stuff. Uh, last wee bit I want to kind of touch upon here is unfortunately I need to talk about Celtic but it's only because they dragged us into it as well uh, Celtic's EGM was held a week before ours uh, and they couldn't help take a dig at us yeah um, what a, f- a surprise yeah. again Derek a, a fan asked a question about fair allocation of tickets and that was largely in reference to the, the League Cup semi-final where they got Mur- went, were put to Murrayfield uh, and Lawwell had a dig at us st- about us being at uh, Hamden and said it worked out well for them then didn't it so there was no need to have that that wee dig there was there but Derek we, we are all they think about I mean it's it's been proven time and time again even, even at the top level yeah uh, you know we are all that they think about as well which you know when the inevitable happens Derek and we do beat them it's going to be their world is going to come crashing down it really is because you know we certainly don't talk about them or have we digs at them when, when we're at our uh, AGMs or press conferences or, or anything like that it's uh, it's normal behaviour for them for things like that because I don't think they ever have an AGM where they don't have a wee snide no comment about us so it's to be expected yep uh, it was a Celtic fan asked a question about uh, their fan safety at the up and coming Old Firm game at Ibrox uh, and that was obviously in relation to the issues at the last game with the crushing yes it was their own fans in yep. their own section that yep. were the crushing basically Parkhead's a dump the, the back of Parkhead it lends itself to a crush point with the narrow tunnel at the back um, f- a fan on Twitter tried to say to me that the gates were closed um, there was an article pre- after that the gates were not closed at the back the pictures clearly show that I know a Celtic fan who was actually at the game and he said the gates weren't closed but the issue actually was was the fact that the police were stopping fans going down both sections at either end and that's what kind of caused the, 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 the kind of panic and the, the crush almost because there was too many fans in the in the, in the the section and they weren't allowing fans to get out or in so um, you don't have that issue at Ibrox because it's open all round the narrowest point is at the back of the govern rear which is still quite a big big area and it's certainly not a very enclosed tunnel where crushing is likely to happen so I don't understand what the point that they were trying to make there and certainly obviously it led Peter Lywell to come out and say that, you know, it's a certainly a consideration we will not take our allocation of tickets uh, if we see that there's going to be any issues there. Well, <laughs> fucking good. We don't want you there in the first Aye. place. We'll wait and see if that pans out, Derek. Again, it's all lip service, uh, you know, to try and appease their lot also. The other thing I thought was hilarious was that... Uh, 
that Lowell actually questioned a superintendent. Yeah. Did you read? Did you read that that, that one as well? You know, a, a high-ranking police officer who was actually at, at the match, who basically said that the Celtic fans could, could have incited a riot. That was his professional opinion, but according to Peter Lowell, that's a lot of nonsense in this boy. Obviously, doesn't know what he's talking about. Even although I think he was maybe the match commander or the assistant match commander at the game. Again, taking any any uh, criticism of their team away altogether and putting it back on to whoever it was that said that again ridiculous statement but Peter Lawwell they're totally ridiculous Yeah, and another person in Celtic totally ridiculous as well police held a review into the rush of our fans at the end of the last Old Firm game uh, basically due because of the golden Celtic yep. players uh, yeah, doing a, a lap of honour yeah. mm-hmm. that that's was Brendan Rodgers was it not that said that I thought it was P- Peter Lawwell, no. Derek, but uh, re- regardless, to actually question, you know, the superintendent that was in charge at the time, who's there, that's his job. He's trained to, you know, evaluate these things and e- e- view these things for, for for him to come away with that. It's just, it's absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? And everybody knows it's a fact that the police will have a word with the, the both sets of players before old firm games to basically just say, don't nothing stupid, don't incite any riots. And that's something certainly they would have told. It's the first time, I think, that a holdback has been... Uh, um, done at an old firm game for, to my knowledge, since ever. Um, yep. So th- it was quite clear that there was going to be a hold back in a section of, of where the Rangers fans were. Now, Celtic players didn't need to go over there anyway to do a lap of honour, but they not only did they go over there, they started goading the Rangers fans. So, you know, it's, it's incredible that once again they think they can get away with this. And I think Celtic need to remember or Celtic are completely forgetting about the likes of Griffiths wiping his nose on our corner flag tying a Celtic flag to a Celtic uh, scarf to uh, our goalpost you know are these not the exact same thing they, they've got a the, the, the lack of self-awareness and their, their hypocrisy is just astounding but you know it goes to show for a club that you know steeped in their dodgy history, isn't it? You know that they, they, they have no shame whatsoever. No, none whatsoever, Derek. Absolutely none. And how dare anyone even make the slightest bit of you know criticism aimed towards their club? It's incredible. Whether it's fans, whether it's officials, whether it's players, whether it's you know even a high-ranking police officer, do you know what I mean? It's it's absolutely incredible. Uh, and again, it's it's to be expected, Derek. That's that's the way that they are. You know, I don't mind Celtic players having a bit of a laugh and a bit of a joke and rubbing it in, and certainly Celtic fans as well. If that's all it is, if they're in a in a position, we don't like it, but we we do the same. But there's a difference between that. And goading people, and you know, really just trying to put the wind up them. And you know, again, you know, this is where this whole SFA charge of, of uh, Willie Collum kind of comes yeah. back in itself. Is that not the exact same thing? It's incredible, Derek. It really is. I still honestly can't get over that. That's what's been said tonight. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. It really is. So we'll leave it there. Yeah, and uh, we'll go on to this story. Drunk man pulls trousers down, jumps on McDonald's counter and helicopters his penis. <laughs> I actually heard about this, Derek. I read about this in the, in the paper. <laughs> a man has appeared in court after he whipped down his trousers, jumped on a McDonald's he- a counter and started to helicopter his penis while heavily fuelled by alcohol. Edinburgh Sheriff Court heard that around 5am on 22nd of July this year, 29-year-old Ryan Dolan from Musselburgh popped into the South Andrews Street branch of the fast food cl- uh, chain where he started pretending to serve customers before, p- before pulling down his trousers and, and doing a weird dance while shocked customers and staff looked on. I had I, I have actually read, read about this one, Derek. This is how I know that you've no good for it. some do, dodgy website. I absolutely incredible. The, the fiscal oh. de- the fiscal deputy told the court out of the blue he took his trousers and pants off, showing his penis and testicles, and thereafter was dancing with his trousers down. <laughs> Understandably, oh. Dolan was asked to leave, but he didn't pay attention to the request. Instead, got his genitals out again. The deputy fiscal said he grabbed his penis and started to play with it, pretending to serve customers and danced again, carrying up a helicopter-like moves with his penis. After a few minutes, he pulls his trousers back up again and left. 
Dolan's behaviour is... Do- Dolan's behaviour was described as a boisterous act heavily fuelled by alcohol. <laughs> he, he did his party piece and left Derek. That was very, but, basically it. Oh it? yes. <laughs> He apparently has very little recollection of the incident, but the sheriff noted that he had two previous convictions for similar offences. Oh dear! <laughs> I know, but I know what we'll do, lads. We'll go and get pissed and go and run into McDonald's and show everybody her boss. Yes, that's basically it. Oh, what's the world coming to? Eh? Exactly. So that wraps it up for this episode. <laughs> As ever, uh, you can find us all on our social media pages. Uh, the main one, obviously, is our website, which is iReadyPodcast.wordpress.com, where you can find all the links to all the places where we are about the internet. We have obviously got our Spotify page, our YouTube page. We're on Instagram. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash iReadyPod, and our Twitter handle is at iReadyPod. So... Onwards to Villarreal tomorrow night, or I'll be t- uh, tonight uh, if you're listening to it just now, and then obviously Sunday. So all we can say is thanks for listening and goodbye. Yep, good luck Rangers tomorrow. Here's hope they can do it. Take care everyone and we'll speak soon. And the stadium erupts in red, white and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go.